Environmental issues are a massive international concern and everyone can play their part. This film looks at two inspiring and award-winning schools where ecology has transformed the curriculum. Built in the 1950s, Dorothy Stringer School in Brighton and Hove, East Sussex was by no means eco-friendly. With hard work and dedication, a group of pupils and staff have transformed the school and the derelict building to put the environment firmly on the agenda. Dr. Dan Danahar and Rob Sandercock are environmental coordinators and key figures in the work at Dorothy Stringer. In the very first year that I was here, I looked at it and I thought, this is going to be a marvellous opportunity for a field centre or an environmental centre. And I whirled around with the idea in my head. And then one day, the assistant head said to me, you know, I've been thinking that this could be, that building out there could be a marvellous environmental centre. <laughs> at first I was really fed up because somebody had got my idea. But then I realised that in fact it worked to my advantage because I didn't have to persuade anybody. It was already there. There were a few other people that were quite interested in, in trying to do something, uh, but only when we all got together did we feel that we had enough energy and momentum to actually get something off the ground. Um, and uh, in the autumn of 2000, we went about actually clearing the whole building and uh, slowly, bit by bit, we actually had the building, we've done the building up. With work complete, the centre has become a focal point for environmental activity throughout the school. It then allowed us to um, have a centre, the kids get involved with what we do, there's a sense of belonging, uh, property is really important, uh, and, 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 and of course there's the sense of autonomy as well, that they have a sense that they can do things in the area uh, and, uh, and make it their own. The Eco Centre has been a really positive um, part of what we do. I think you need big projects in order to be able to um, engage enthusiasm to motivate people to make them think that you know we're getting on and achieving things and from that point of view that's been excellent. With the centre as a base environmental work can spread through the school. These boxes were um, a trial with Brighton and Hope Council but they were decided they were too small for household um, uh, recycling. These were going to be thrown away, so um, in true recycling style, we we're actually using the recycling boxes in school. Waste paper is collected from every classroom and put to good use. We actually take the paper and if it's only been used on one side and it's not damaged, then we actually collate it and put it together and make recycled notepads out of that paper. An in-house magazine is produced in the Environmental Centre. Green Pages is, is a collection of articles written by pupils, teachers, governors, talking about all of the activities that have taken place over, say, a six-month period. It voices uh, the interests, the enthusiasm, and shows the diversity of activities that we undertake. I'm really, really proud of the Green Pages. It's one of the most important things that we do. Uh, because it lets people know and I really think that if you're going to be successful you need to let people know what you're doing. Libby Danahar, an English and drama teacher, is a key member of the group and keen to work with environmental themes in the classroom. When you're writing your articles for the Green Pages you need to use these kind of persuasive techniques if you want to tell people about the Environment Centre and about the work that we do around the school to make it a better place. <laughs> Reactional Many schools see environmental education as recycling and, and that's it. Um, uh, and that's a great mistake I think because you have to contextualise these things. People have to understand why we're doing it. And uh, so what we try to do is we try to get the kids out into the local environment. We get them to see what we call the crown jewels. We live in the South Down so they see the amazing Chalk Hill Blue Butterflies, the Orchids, they, we want them to inspire, be inspired by a sense of wonder and awe about the natural environment. And, and it gives them a sense of, 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 of purpose, of, of reason why we, we save uh, tin cans or, or recycle paper. It, it lets them realise why the environment's worth caring about. I'd love to, uh, to get some spare of Outside stuff. school hours, environmental work, work continues. The Woodland Working Days came about because we recognised that one of the important things that we could do is make a contribution uh, to local conservation, wildlife conservation, and to uh, help with the uh, uh, environmental education using this as a resource. 
Now we've got the environment centre all sorted out. We're doing loads of different things and like now we've just started the compost thing so it's going to be really great and growing our own food and stuff. So. It lets children be involved with hammers right? yeah, and lots of other big heavy things but also like the environment. So it, Looking after the environment and doing stuff for it, like helping grow the natural vegetables and not using too many fertilizers, just doing it all naturally. After the day is done, you feel like, oh wow, I've actually helped the world. Is it you, you do long strokes, I think. It's a great day for the children. They really um, uh, get a chance to do lots of different things outside of the classroom, uh, be it learning how to use a saw or a sledgehammer. Um, they love banging in the stakes or you know, even just sawing a piece of wood is a, a novel thing for many of the children. To pull it out and carry it all the way round and dump it up here. So I'm that. That's it, that's much better. Hopefully I've given the opportunity for some students to um, experience something outside of the classroom and have a greater understanding of the natural world and appreciation for it and that hopefully they will make a few decisions in their future lives that does go on to be a positive trickle effect down to many others. Doing environmental projects, do we think that we've got it right 100%? Do we think all our children never drop litter etc? No. Uh, but what we try and do is encourage them to see what is possible and why it's important. We'd like to think that we're raising environmental consciousness. We'd like to think that today of all days, you know, when, when the world seems to be on the brink of a global disaster with global warming and so many different things that we hear about, that, that the, the younger population are, are aware of this. Um, hopefully it's raised people awareness. Hopefully um, by raising the awareness of all environmental issues, it's made students think a little bit a bit more about what they do. The only way that we've got any hope of making sure that this planet is saved in the future is by giving children some sort of environmental education and appreciation of that. In 2003, Cheshire County Council set about building a unique new school with the environment at its heart. It's become nationally and internationally recognised as an exemplar of sustainable design. I think Cheshire for a long time have wanted to build a sustainable school um, for the new century, looking at environmental issues, but also as a learning and teaching environment for the 21st century as well. Um, and they had this opportunity to build this new school for this new estate. When we started to think about some of the design principles that we wanted to incorporate um, into this location, um, one of the key features that we were very keen to, uh, to ensure that we did incorporate was sustainability. The building's also been designed very much with the idea of minimising the, the footprint that the construction leaves on the planet, even taking into account, to account energy consumption. Kingsmead is more than just a sustainable building. The architects designed it with children and education in mind. It's an interactive environment as, as far as we can, we can possibly make it. Um, so that pupils can use it, they can see what's going on, they can learn about the performance of the building, um, they can learn about the environmental factors. We've incorporated uh, within the design of the building a rainwater harvesting system. Um, the rainwater is uh, gathered from the roof and it comes down through a clear plastic tube in the hall. Um, pupils can actually see this, they can see this happening um, and they know that the water is going through the tube into an underground tank where it is filtered and then we reuse the water. So where did that come from? Um, the rainwater off the roof. Right, we're going to have a look at the rain. Yeah, see how much rain we collected last yesterday. The younger children who have been monitoring it this week, they're quite young and they're being introduced to things like three digit numbers so reading hundreds so they're you know good on tens and units they're starting to do hundreds some of them of course when we've had a lot of rain it's been into the thousands so they're being introduced to bigger numbers and being asked what we're using the language of those big numbers on the daily count um, this is a building that's, that, that that breathes and thinks for itself so the weather station monitors externally um, what's happening with the weather the wind direction whether or not it's raining, 
how warm uh, or cold it happens to be. Um, and the building will decide whether or not it needs more ventilation. They've got, ex you can see the expo there's exposed pipes up there. Um, purple wires carry data, green telephones. And in the entrance hall, there's one little solitary black wire going up on the roof and that's going to collect the solar electricity. So they see the building working. We have um, photovoltaic uh, panels on the roof um, together with solar panels um, and they generate um, hot water for the school and they also generate additional electricity for the school. We really encourage people, you know, not necessarily buying all new stuff all the time, recycling what we can. It's just the way of thinking and it doesn't have to be anything big. It's just like when the carpet men were, you know, saying, don't throw those away. They had these big strips of plasticky stuff to protect the carpets. We'll just go in the skip. When we had the skip when the building was made, I think more came out than went in. Right, who can remind us? Why are we monitoring the waste? Why are we trying to reduce our waste? Okay, um, Andrew. So we don't make um, the thing called the greenhouse effect. To make the to, to make the planet too hot. We've got a health eating menu, um, which involves home cooked food every day. That's great, but there is more waste because you know if we gave them chips and burgers every day, we would have less waste. The brains would all be adult in the afternoon. So there's some children in year four who are monitoring it. So they weigh the food waste every day and they set themselves a target. They use the averages. They worked out that you can't, you can't take one day's data. You have to do an average so that you can make a realistic target. Not to eat all your dinner, but to actually take what you want and use what you take. So being a more ethical consumer um, is, is really fundamental to that. When we grow up, we would be um, just like, just very em environmentally friendly because we get to um, help help the globe um, environment and the global warming. And we learn a lot about like the outside, and we look after it as much as we do in the inside as well. This building is going to be here for a long time, so there will be many generations of children uh, who come through this school and uh, see what we've, uh, what we've done. They're more environmentally aware, certainly, than when they came to school. They talk about their impact on the planet. They, they're trying to look after the environment inside and out. They are more aware. The challenge is to embed that into habit. The nice thing about this school is it's a very beautiful building, it's very aspirational, it's not alternative. The environmental issues shouldn't be the prerogative of alternative groups, it should be mainstream for everybody, for all our children.